I'm Jason, and this is Level Up Hobbies, where I build, paint, and play tabletop games. Now today I'm going to be painting up the prophet of Gork and Mork himself, Gazgul Thraka. Now for all of you Orc players, this is a beast on the battlefield, and also a beast to paint. So let's go ahead and jump in and start painting. Enjoy. I start with a base coat of Vallejo Black Surface Primer over the entire model. And this is to just give a nice even coat to start layering paint on top of. From there, I'm going to add some Wraithbone base to all of the skin and clothing areas. And I'm applying this so I have a lighter base coat to paint these lighter colors onto because without this it would take you know probably 10 15 coats to uh, to get the color to where you really want it at So it took about three coats of the wraith bone to get total coverage. Um, and even there, it's kind of thin in some areas, but it's perfect for the shadows and the light areas. And now I'm gonna paint in the cloth, his pants, with Xandri dust. And this will give me a nice tan base coat to work with um, uh, on his pants. Uh, Xandri dust also will take about two to three thin coats to get good coverage of it. I begin layering on some snake bite leather contrast paint, and this will give a really nice warm, worn leather uh, feel over that Xandri dust. And then once that snake bite leather has dried completely, I go in and I dry brush some sandry dust back over that uh, just to build that initial color back up. And from there, I add a little bit of administratum gray to the sandry dust and I start just kind of picking out areas of the pants that ha are more worn and graying out. Show a little bit more weather. Now we're going to start adding some color to the skin. Uh, for orcs, I try to stay away from the more cartoony grass greens, and I like to stick more with like a, a more subdued, uh, more of a subdued green color, like in the olives, and just build up color from there. So for that, I'm going to give it a base coat of Citadel's Death World Forest, and then we'll start layering up colors on that. I like to make sure the Death World Forest is thinned adequately, so it'll take two good coats to uh, achieve the, the color like, that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to add a coat of Citadel's Militarum Green 
contrast paint. And over the Death World Forest, this will give a nice yellowed green uh, color for it that we can work with. And then once that Militarum green is dried, I'm going to build back up the Death World Forest, just leaving the Militarum green in the recesses. Okay, now mix in just a little bit of Wraithbone with the Death World Forest. And I start to build up some highlights on the higher edges of the, uh, the face and skin. I painted the mouth and the gums of the head with some Gene Stealer Purple. And now I'm gonna go in with Shaiish Purple Contrast Paint and just paint that over all of the surfaces. Get some nice uh, shadow details in there. I thinned down the shayish purple and then I started glazing it over the tips of the ears and then in the crevices of like the cheeks and stuff just to add a little bit of color variation to the skin. So I start by basing the teeth with rhinoxide and then I layer up Xandri dust from leaving some of the rhinoxide in the bases. And then after that I use straight wraith bone and just build up the, the bone white color of the teeth, leaving both the Xandri dust and a little bit of rhinoxide in the bases. I think orc faces just benefit from adding um, some type of contrasting color to the green and the purple and the lips and the ears. It really just adds something and brings that, uh, brings that figure more to life. I take and I glaze in some Volopus Pink Contrast Paint into the scars around Gadskull's neck, just to look like there's some type of like infection and inflamed uh, material or skin like right there. When I'm happy with the Volopus Pink, I go ahead and paint in the stitches using some Wraith Bone. And once I get those painted in, I go ahead and I attach the head. So 
I attached the head and I painted his little skull cap and some lead belcher. And then I also play, painted that targeting like uh, retina, like on his cybernetic eye with some uh, Blood Angels red contrast paint. And just added a couple head highlights with some white. I use Iron Warriors to start painting in all of the silver uh, metal bits. I use Basiliconum Gray contrast paint and I just wash it over all of the metal bits. Uh, the Basiliconum, it goes on similar to Nulin Oil and it gives a nice, a nice shade for the metallic pieces. I cut up small bits of masking tape into checkers so I can start masking off portions of the you know, shoulder pauldrons and his, uh, his power claw. And I just place these on uh, in preparation for airbrushing. I spray Ulthuan Gray uh, very lightly over the masked area in the shoulder pauldrons. I just want a really fine transition here. I don't want uh, a really bright checker pattern. I take and I spray corn red across the uh, masked areas of the power claw. I'm going to build this up. Uh, more stronger on top and then kind of faded out towards the bottom of the mask. And then I go in and I spray some Mephiston Red uh, just on the higher edge of the, uh, the Power Claw just to brighten up that red.
I add Balthazar gold to add variation to the metal pieces. I paint over all of the Balthazar gold with snakebite leather, and this adds a nice warm, kind of aged feel to, that, to those metal bits. Take Knoptic Alloy and I start adding highlights to the Balthazar Gold, just using it to you know, do nicks and scratches. Uh, not many hard edge highlights, unless it's an edge that would you know, take a lot of you know, damage or something. I go over the model and any of the bits that are going to be painted another color, I start basing in Corax white, just so I have a, a lighter base to be painting over. I decided to punch up the contrast on this tabard by doing a Grisel underpainting uh, using the siliconum gray. And after I build up the shadows with this, I pumped up the highlights on the tabard with some, uh, some white. And then I'm gonna paint the entire thing using some uh, Flush Terrors red. And it'll give me a really nice contrast between the highlighted red and the shadows. Once the Basiliconum Gray has dried and my shadows are set, I begin painting on the Flesh Terrors Red. Now the contrast paint itself, it uh, kind of glides down from the highlights, leaving those exposed and collects in the shadows. So with me doing that Grisale uh, method there, it's going to really emphasize those, uh, the shadows and the highlights and just make that contrast pop even more. And as you can see, the results of the underpainting really paid off for this, this red color. Um, the, it just really pops on this model now. Um, I'm very happy with the results. And you can achieve similar results with most of the other contrast paints um, and other clear paints. Uh, you just have to test them out. Some will work better than others like um, with different results. Now I begin to use some Cadian flesh tone and start highlighting up the reds on the rest of the model, like the power claw here, the glyphs uh, hanging from the exhaust pipes and so on.
I begin adding some initial highlights to all of the silver steel pieces with some lead belcher. Uh, this is a, a little bit lighter color than the Iron Warriors that I based it with. And then going over that siliconum gray wash, it'll, it's a, a very nice initial highlight for this, this piece, these pieces of metal. I completed and attached the iron gob on the front part of his armor here, and it really uh, just starts to tie the model together. I, I use the same methods that I used in other parts of the model, so I'm not going to go into detail with it, but it's looking really good. I began painting all of the bone areas, such as the skull on top of his armor, and then the horns, and also the teeth on his little necklace um, in some Corax white. And this is in preparation to be covered over again with some wraith bone. Because of the wraith bone, um, it just takes a lot to get good coverage. So if you base it in this first, uh, it goes on a lot easier. I now begin painting all of those bone uh, uh, portions with Skeleton Horde contrast paint. And this will add a nice, just light tan bone color to all of those to work with. Then we can work on highlighting up from this. I highlight up all of the bone parts with wraith bone, and then on the horns, I end up glazing rhinox hide uh, along the tips of them. I begin highlighting up the black armor using Incubi Darkness, and for this, I'll take and just start doing edge highlighting with like scratches and nicks and dings all along uh, the edges of the armor. I prime the base black and then I paint all the dirt and rhinox hide. And then once that's dry, I dry brush up Doomble Brown and then Xandry Dust. And then on top of that, I finish it off with Ushabti Bone.
all of the rock and concrete looking areas, I give it a base coat of uh, Incubi Darkness. And then I finish that up when it's dry with a dry brush of Ulthwan Gray. All the metal plates and wires are painted with Iron Warriors. And then I wash the entire base with Agrax Earthshade. And then I'll dab just little bits of Athonian Camo Shade and then also the uh, uh, Druki Violet just to add some color variations over the, over the entire base. And with the base done, the next thing to do is to mount the model. I start with just the you know torso and legs portion and get it fixed on here so uh, it's easier to work with without the arms. And then I just start attaching those limbs. I use Vallejo's smoke color and I thin it down and start just dabbing it on and running it into crevices. Uh, this adds a really nice kind of dirty pre-rust kind of uh, feel to the parts of the model. Now I break out the Stormhost Silver and I start adding fine scratches and highlights to all of the silver pieces. I make a wash out of burnt umber oil paints and odorless, odorless mineral spirits and I just kind of run them around rivets and joints just to uh, kind of get a, a rust effect like in those areas and once some areas are dry I build it up and you know make it more prominent some. And I finish it off by spraying it with some matte varnish through my airbrush. Uh, this will add a nice protective coating and then also uh, homogenize all of the finishes so it's just one flat finish. And just like that, Gazkull is done! This was a fun model to paint. Uh, I really enjoyed it. That may be biased because of my love for orcs. Um, I have a uh, Death Skull army, and I just love orc, you know, architecture. <laughs> just uh, and their mechanics. It just I don't know. There's something about it that's just awesome. And I've also got the other two incarnations of Gaz Skull from uh, previous editions, and just to see how he has progressed and grown as a model is it's it's fun. Um. Well, uh, thanks for joining me as I you know, 
painted up this phenomenal orc model and uh, it was a lot of fun. I uh, hope to see you guys later. Bye. Thanks again for joining me today on Level Up Hobbies as I painted up Gaskull Thraka. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I publish new material. Thanks again, and remember, build, paint, and play tabletop games. Later. Thank you.